Grace and peace to you from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Good morning. I want to thank you so much for inviting us into your home for worship this morning. It is an honor that you would choose to worship with us today. I would ask as you are worshiping this morning to comment below this video with your name and the names of those who are worshiping this morning with you. We just love to see who is incorporated into the body of Christ as we worship together each week. Would also ask that you uh, comment in the video in the below the video with any prayer requests that you may have that you are comfortable making public. Uh, because this is a pre-recorded service, we will not be able to lift those up individually during our service. But I would invite you all, as you see those prayer requests come in, hold them in your prayers, and know that that I and the church will hold those in prayer as well. I do have a couple of announcements as we get started this morning. I am out of the office this week. Uh, that is why this service is pre-recorded and why we will have a guest preacher today. Um, you'll see more about that later. Uh, if you do have a pastoral emergency and need to get in touch with me, contact Joanne Testerman here at the church office and she will get a message to me and I will get back to you as quickly as I can. Also want to let you know that the Feeding South Dakota truck will be here Thursday morning. As of the time that I am recording this service, I do not know if they are still um, distributing those via the, the COVID-19 procedures that have been set up over the last few months. Uh, that is what I am assuming, which means distribution will probably start around 11 o'clock. But if you need to confirm that, you can contact Joanne Testerman in the church office or Connie Fawcett. But now let's turn our hearts and our minds to worship this morning. Let's begin our time of worship together by singing our opening hymn, We Are the Church.
us pray together our opening prayer. One body, one spirit, one hope, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in all. Take this patchwork collection of persons and quilt together your church. Like old pieces of cloth, take these words and songs and prayers, take our thoughts and inner hungers, and join them together into a new and living fabric, the purpose of which is to cover and color your world, or at least our corner of it, with grace and love. In Christ. Amen. Our psalm reading this morning is Psalm 95. Let's listen for the word of God. O come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving. Let us make a joyful noise to him with songs of praise. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hand are the depths of the earth. The heights of the mountains are his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and the dry land, which his hands have formed. O oh, come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord, our Maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture, and the sheep of his hand. Thus ends the reading. We now have an opportunity to give back to God just a piece of all that God has given to us in gratitude and love. Let us present our tithes and our offerings. Let us pray together as we dedicate our gifts to God. God of grace and glory, receive the gifts we have received from your hand into the service of this church and the world. Transform our lives into acts of your grace that we may be bound into one body and one spirit through Christ, the author of our salvation. Amen. I'm reading from the New Revised Standard Version, so it's a little bit different, uh, but uh, pretty much uh, follow along as we read together. I, therefore, uh, the prisoner in the Lord, beg you to lead a life worthy of calling to which you've been called, with all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another in love, making every effort to maintain the unity of the Spirit and the bond of peace. There is one body and one spirit, just as you were called to the one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in all. For each of us has been given grace, has been given grace as Christ apportioned it. The gifts he gave were some would be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers, to equip the saints for the work of ministry, for the building up of the body of Christ until all of us come to the unity of faith and of knowledge of the Son of God, to maturity, to the measure of the full stature of Christ. But speaking the truth in love, we must grow up in every way into him who is the head, that is Christ. 
This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray together. Gracious and loving God, we thank you for the power of your word. We thank you for the opportunity that gathers your people to not only hear your word, but then allow your word through the gift of your Holy Spirit to touch and live into our hearts. Today, as we uh, examine this question, who are we together? Open our hearts and minds and spirits to the word that you have for each of us today. For we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. One of my favorite segments on CBS News, and has been since I was a little child, is the segment on, on the road. And it started with Charles Kuralt. Some of you might remember him. If you're younger, you won't. Uh, today, obviously, it's, that tradition is carried on by Steve Hartman, and uh, he does a great job. And the idea behind it, as Charles Kuralt pitched it to the management of CBS News back in 1965, uh, the idea was to, to get away from not only from uh, news of the globe and the world or the, uh, the country and the states, but to really look at individual people, the, the breadth and depth of the community uh, of Americans and their daily lives. And uh, <clears throat> Izzy uh, Blackman, uh, Charles Gerald is no longer with us, but his cameraman is still with us. And when he was interviewed recently, he said this about management wasn't too thrilled with the idea of on the road because it didn't see America as Charles Kuralt saw America. And so with his RV, he began to travel around and, and get the individual powerful stories of courage, of hope, of love, of joy, of people reaching out. He said, after the first story, the phones rang so much that that became a permanent part of the news. We gather as God's people, not only today, to, to think about uh, all the ways that we are community together, but we gather to answer the question, who are we together? Now, uh, Pastor Taylor and Pastor Andrea have shared with us their understandings of who is God and who am I. And we understand that these are questions that we continually have to not only pray over, uh, but live, um, uh, live up with uh, throughout the variety of seasons of our lives. Because these are important questions to understand who we are in our journeys of faith and life together. Our Apostle Paul was writing to the church at Ephesus, and our passage from Ephesians chapter 4 is one of the most, uh, at least in my life, has been one of the most important chapters in the ways that we understand uh, ministry and community together. Now, when we talk about uh, community, we usually word, use the word church, and sometimes we confuse the word church with a building. And as we sang earlier, really the, ch the term church is really about how not only do we worship, but we are, are collectively as a body, a community of faith together. And in fact, when we use the word church, we also use the word body of Christ, people of God, a community of faith, the gathered people of God. And in the early uh, portions of uh, Acts, you know, Jesus really created this understanding of how to be church or the community of faith or the body of Christ by gathering 12 disciples and over a three-year period, they taught and shared this, trying to understand and answer these questions. Well, who is God, and how does God see us? And, and who am I as a, as a disciple and a follower of Jesus? And then who are we together? And later, after Jesus' resurrection, the disciples were sent out, and they went and created church communities along with the Apostle Paul, who everywhere he traveled as a missionary would establish a, bait, a group of people who would encourage and strengthen one another. In faith, And so uh, this idea and this imagery of being a community of faith is an important ingredient of our journeys of life and faith together. So often I hear people say, well, you know, I can just be uh, in my relationship with God. It's just me and God. However, that's not how uh, God designed us to be. We are to be in relationship. And being in relationship, we also, as a body, the church, the community of faith, are called to be people who truly live out this ethic of, and this way of love. Now, uh, Reuben Job shared with us uh, some reflections on this question along with the Apostle Paul. And the first thing uh, from the scripture and from jo Job's book I, I gleaned was that we are all worthy of the call. We're to be people worthy of the call of God. And in the scripture, it talks about 
how these attributes of being uh, a, a community together begins with being people who are humble, humility. That in our relationships with another, we're gentle with one another, even when we disagree. We are, are to be people who uh, try to build up the body of Christ. That together we uh, bear witness as a community of faith to God. Uh, Job tells us in the book that, you know, um, in our world today, uh, we are strife with anger and bitterness, uh, hatred, divisions, and violence. That those seem to be the, the, the important themes of our relationships together in our communities. And, and pa Paul is encouraging the, uh, the Ephesians as well as us that as, as people worthy of the call of God, as a community of faith, we are to, to bring to the world a different picture, a different way of how we relate with one another. We move beyond ourselves and our wants and desires and seek what is best for the community. Now, we're seeing this played out even in the midst of this, this virus, this pandemic. Because, you know, on the one hand, we have this sense of the individual needs, you know, uh, related to uh, jobs and economy, and we understand that. And yet over here we have the, the importance of community, of keeping the community healthy and safe. And when those two seem to collide, the question is, uh, what does it mean to be an individual in the midst of the community? It, is, it means, as Paul says, we are to be worthy of the call, the call of, of humility, humility and, and gentleness and, and looking for the ways that we can build each other up and care for one another, even in the midst of this uh, pandemic. This sense of being worthy and being a community is not easy. Uh, Reuben Job tells us there's a, there was a, a quote where he said, everybody wants community, but it's very hard to sustain. Because at times our own individual needs we think are more important than the, the large gift of the community together. But Jesus, Jesus taught the disciples and teaches us and, and follows through in the Apostle Paul that that to be worthy of the call of being a community of people together and to witness to the world that there's a different way of relating to one another, that way of humility and binding together to love one another. I'm reminded of a story Jamie had in a severe a teenager, young lady, uh, was in a car accident and because of that had to have her arm amputated to save her life. It devastated her so much that she just was so embarrassed by what the loss of limb that she, she didn't go to school and church and didn't go into any other activities for a year. Eventually, with the help of her parents and her, and her friends and, and the counselor, she was able to make that step back into the community. And as she did, <clears throat> uh, her mother called the church youth group leader and Sunday school teacher and said, uh, you know, now Jamie's going to come back, and I hope that the other kids and yourself will be able to welcome her and encourage her as she comes back into the community. Well, the day came, and uh, of course, the, there was a substitute. The teacher who was supposed to teach was sick, and the substitute didn't get the word about Jamie coming back in, and so there was a lesson was about community and how we uh, are the church together. And if you remember that uh, little uh, ditty uh, that we use sometimes, uh, you know, here's the church, here's the steeple, uh, open the door, church doors and see all the people. Well, Jamie was just horrified. Uh, she could only do it with one hand, and immediately, immediately, a young man in her youth group came over and joined hands with her, and they did it together. You know, that's the symbol and the understanding of how do we open our hearts to being worthy of the call as a community of faith, as the body of Christ. And in fact, as I said, in the early part of Acts, uh, people of this community were called the people of the way. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. And because we are people of the way, we share a different view to the world of saying, no, community means uh, gentleness and humility, uh, forgiveness and love. Reuben Job goes on to share with us that we are to be a faith family. As a family of God, as we hear that when our understanding of that God is God is a God of love, 
and that each of us as individuals are transformed and changed by the power of that love, and that each of us is a child of God, and that a part of being this uh, community of faith is that God shows no partiality. In fact, God invites all to come and experience this transforming gift of love and calls upon each of us to bear witness to that in our individual lives and as a community together to bear witness to the ways that we can uh, be people who help and who encourage. And one of the great gifts that Reuben Job tells us in the book is that as a people, in our communications with one another, we need to be honest. Not only honest to, with God in our uh, relationships and conversation with God about our hearts and lives, but that we need to be honest in our relationships with one another, and we demonstrate that as, as the church, as the body of Christ, in the ways then we proclaim that good news, and that when people see how we relate to one another, we hopefully are breaking down this sense of anger and frustration, this sense of violence and division, this bitterness in our world. We bring to a world a picture of love and joy, hope and renewal. This understanding uh, helps out by Paul's telling us in the, this passage that, that we have been given gifts and different gifts to each person for the uh, importance of building up the body. In essence, we are to equip one another in encouragement and strengthening us and recognizing those gifts and saying, can you use this gift to feed another person? Can you use this gift to call someone in our congregation and outside our congregation and give them an encouraging word? Can you write a note that of thanks and encouragement to someone? When we do those acts together, we do that out of our, our love for God, our, our representation of being God's people in the world, being worthy of the call of God, so that we too can then give and build up the body of Christ. My friends, the body of Christ is the experience of understanding God's presence in our lives. I'm a basketball fan, and I've been watching this uh, documentary on the last dance of Michael Jordan and the Chicago Bulls in the 90s. And, uh, and one of the things that in, has been interesting me is this conver inside conversation. And, and Michael Jordan was such a great basketball player, probably the greatest basketball player ever, that he could score at will. And uh, he had great ability. And yet every time he tried to carry the, the team on his back, the team, when they got to championship games, would lose. In fact, I, there's one quote where somebody, one of the coaches said to him, uh, Michael, there's no I, uh, no I in team. And he said, but there is an I in win. He was so focused on winning, he thought he had to do it by himself. Uh, later in the documentary, we see that the team, a uh, new coach comes in and tries to promote this understanding of team, and, and uh, so it takes a whole year, and eventually they get into the finals of the championship, and it's the fourth quarter, the game is tied, and in the huddle, uh, Phil Jackson says repeatedly to Michael Jordan, Paxton is open, get him the ball, because the other team was double teaming and triple teaming and daring uh, Michael Jordan to do it on his own and so he heard it for the first time and really after they came out of that he saw Paxson was open he passed him the ball and he made the shot it happened again and again and again and they won the championship Michael Jordan discovered there is no I in team it's a we in team when we ask the question who are we together there is no I in team there is no I in following Jesus. We do have our individual personal relationships with Jesus, but those personal relationships have to be in a community built together to be the body of Christ, to be the people of the way. Today, I, I just encourage us to remind ourselves that even though we're separated, we are still the body of Christ. Jesus tells us to come and follow me. And he doesn't tell us only as individuals, but he tells us as the body of Christ to come follow him. And in following Jesus, we then discover the richness of not only our own lives transformed, but in our interpersonal relationships with one another as a church community, we can do so much more in feeding our neighbor and lifting up those who have lost their jobs or needs encouragement 
to helping those who are uh, on the front lines of this uh, peace by praying and, and sharing with words of encouragement and strength and helping seniors, senior high students who can't walk through graduation experience the power and uplifting love of Jesus Christ in their lives. My friends, we are called to be together the people of God, the people of the way. So who are we together? We are the team, the team that represents God and Jesus Christ, worthy of the call, being a family of faith, in giving of our gifts and talents to the uplifting to our world and witnessing to our world the richness of God's love. As we move into our prayer time, I invite you to read through the prayer concerns that have been lifted up in the comments and hold those in prayer. Also know that God hears the prayers of your hearts, whether they are spoken or held in secret. I'm going to invite you into just a moment of silent prayer, and then I will guide us through the remainder of our prayer time. Let us pray. In these days of knowing, not knowing, we, like the buds on the trees, are eager to burst forth into the world. Hold us gently in place until we are certain in the ways of loving our neighbor. Let us not toss ourselves and our neighbor into thoughtless harm. Let us recall that all life is sacred in your eyes, O God, from the smallest child to those with lines of life lived etched upon their hands and faces and including those whose immune systems are compromised. These, too, are your beloved, whose care we are blessed to bear. And we seek blessing upon those who have answered a call to care for us in our times of physical healing. No matter our opinion, our ideology, our hardship, Lord, these we hold in our care as neighbors. Help us to hear that caring for one another is your command on our lives. Open our ears to hear the tragedy in this time of coronavirus and of racial uprising. And not only our own anxiety and grief that may come on blustering words and tired rhetoric. Instead, let us think on how we will make the world a better place. Instead, let us think on what kindness, however small, we might offer someone. Instead, let us remember that our life is not our own, but belongs to you. Instead, let us dream how we might enter our communities to be a beacon of hope for those living in disorder to come alongside them while they find order, alongside them while they reorder their lives. Help us always, Lord, to remember our promise to you that we will care for our neighbors as ourselves. We ask this in Jesus' name, as we pray together as he taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
and now receive the benediction. Go forth to lead lives worthy of your calling. Go forth as one body, one spirit, to share the one Lord of all. Go forth to speak truth in love. Go forth in one hope, one baptism, to share your gifts with the world. Go forth to build up the world in love. Go forth in peace. Amen. Music